You know it's hard out here for the things When your printer's not printing what you think We have all the colors that you may need From a company that name is that ain't poppin' Hard out here for the things When your printer's not printing what you think We have all the colors that you may need From a company that name is that ain't poppin' Hello everyone, this is Thurston Smith with That Ain't Just Poppin' where the ink does what it says, it pops. Today gonna be a very special video for the Mac lovers. We're going to go over on how to start your sublimation business with your MacBook computers. Stay tuned, guys. Hello, everyone. We are back. I am Sir Smith, the owner of That Ink Is Popping, where the ink does what it says, it pops. In this video here, we are going over some of the requirements that is necessary in order to start your successful sublimation t-shirt business. First of all, you will need a printer. You will need not only just a printer, you need some type of sublimation printer. And the most popular printer these days are your Espens printer, your Workforce, your EcoTanks. For the sake of this tutorial here, I am using the Espens EcoTank ET8550 printer. You also will need some sublimation ink. You will need a tape dispenser and also heat resistant tape. You will need any kind of heat resistant glove. You will need heat press transfer pillow and also heat press Teflon sheets. You also will need a temperature gun, an infrared thermometer. A lint roller. Some kind of scissors. Cutting board, some type of cutting board, any kind would do, as long as you could cut. And for you guys that's new into the game, um, that have maybe have trouble with aligning your products, you may need some type of T square. And you also need sublimation paper. And you also would need your bushel paper. Pretty heavy too. So guys, again, as you can see here, it is very, very easy and it's don't require that much in order to start your sublimation business. But let me just say this here. One of the things that I noticed for years when I had started my sublimation business or I got into the crafting side of the business, um, I always thought to myself that I needed all the money in the world in order to get started. That is so not true. Okay. But one thing I did find out that a lot of people have trouble with is picking equipment that is needed in order to get started. So, with that being said, I would say this here. If you're going to invest into a certain area more than one, let's say, let's say you had this much money, let's say you have a budget, <clears throat> and you have this much money for supplies, this much money for equipment. One thing I want to say is, I will lean more into getting a good heat press. That is so important. It will save you time, frustrations. <laughs> Believe me, you will thank me for that. Um, and also, then after that, I will get into investing more and more into my supplies, which is needed in order to start your business. But you don't have to break the bank. 
get a decent heat press. I mean, don't get it wrong. There have been people that started with some type of heat press that um did well with the heat press. But I have, but you have, you know, like a lot of people heard of horror stories where they had to, some people, well, no, not just some people, a lot of people had to replace their heat press within 30 days, 60 days. Uh, some people don't even make half of that. So if you had money, I would tell you guys to lean into a decent heat press. In our next take, we'll be using our printer and we will be using our MacBook. Within the MacBook, we'll be going over the printer settings in order for us to get the correct settings for our sublimation needs. With that being said, let's get into it. Hello everyone, we are back. In today's video, like I promised you guys earlier, we are going to go over the printer settings with our MacBooks. So with that being said, before we start printing, I'm going to load our sublimation paper. And I'm going to do that stuff with you live, guys. So bear with me. I'm going to get out of my seat, and I'm going to load the printer with sublimation paper. And one thing about sublimation paper, guys, before we load it, you want to make sure you know what size is the size that's printed on from the back and front. So a lot of times what I do is um, I will look at it from the front and back, and I can tell this is the front side. So I would go to the printer with the front side, open up the printer, tray. Pull out the uh, printer tray. I will load in paper. And again, you can always double check to make sure you're doing the right side. Because you could tell it look, you could tell one side looks smoother than the other side. Yeah, see, you could tell. So I'm going to put that back inside. Load back in my tray. Okay. Here it's going to ask you, your printer going to ask you what type of paper you put in there. So what you need to do is just, you guys already know what to do. Just choose the paper type. And I'm going to go to Presentation Max. And I'm going to choose the paper size. It is already leather. Eight and a half by 11 and close. Okay guys, so going back over to the computer and we will jump right into our tutorial. I'm doing everything live, so bear with me guys. Nothing gonna be perfect. <clears throat> um, mm, mm, I don't need no headphones. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to um, start by opening up a preview of some images, okay? So I will click here and I'm going to show you guys, the, the, you see here, there's different images that we could um, use today. We have a color palette and we have uh, images that I have made up myself. Um, today I want to touch the colors and today I wanted to test Test out the blacks. Um, and I'm going to use my idol, Kobe Bryant. May his soul rest in peace. Okay. So let's say we um, want to print these here from our desktop or inside a folder here. And if you're a Mac, you know, when you click on a certain item, it would open up as preview. Okay, so I'm going to slide this over. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to stretch this out so we can see better. Okay, now let's say we want to print from here. All right, now we're about to get into the max settings of printing from 
our desktop or maybe put them inside a folder of a regular image. Let's say we're not using our circuit or our silhouette or any other programs that you guys may use for your crafting needs. Okay, so we're gonna go to preview. No, no, we're not. We're gonna go to file and we're gonna go to print. <clears throat> Just ready for load up. Voila. Okay. As you can see here, it asks you what type of printer you is uh, you using. So what you would do, you would click here to choose your printer if it's not already chosen for you, which I was already chosen, and I'll just click on it. Okay. Cool. Now let's say you have a preset already made up. You would just click here and you would choose your preset. For the sake of this video here, I'm going to choose Photo on Presentation Mac. I'm going to leave it there for now because something's going to change once we get further down. Okay. The copies, one, pages, all, or, you know, you click here, you can choose from, let's say you had 20 pages. And you could choose from 5 to 15 if you want to just print those pages. Um, you could choose 3 to 8. You got to get the idea. But for now, we're going to do all pages because we're only working with one, one item at a time. Now, here, here we go here where we say the paper size. You click here and you choose your paper size. But for my printer, you know, when I, let's say I want to use here, it's a U.S. letter. I go here, I have to choose what I want. You know, you guys choose what you, you know, what you want. Um, I want my size to be borderless. Cool. Okay. And you guys will understand what I mean by borderless. It means around the image, it will not show any white lining. Okay, so as I go down to here and I see where it says preview, but we're not going to click into this yet. What I want to do is for some people that have issues with saying, oh, my print looked too small. Okay, cool. You see what it says scale? Okay, but under there it has scale to fit. You will click scale to fit and boom, look what it just did. Okay, and now you guys see what I mean when I say borderless. Okay, so when I print, I don't want any white edges showing. Okay, cool. But I'm going to go back to scale because there's something else that's going to go uh, that is going to happen once I get back here. So I'm going to click back on scale because this is a tutorial. We have to go in depth. Here we go with preview. All right, now I'm going to click on layout. And hey, we're just going to go over pages, spreadsheet, border, none, blah, blah, blah. As you get, you guys can see. Go back up. Color matching. Okay. You have your color sync and your SPS color control. Now, let's say you have a different printer. You would choose that printer color control. Once you do that, once you click on it, boom. Okay, then next we're going to go up, click where it say color match it again, and we're going to go paper handle. Okay, and you see diagram drop down. Okay, pages to print, all pages, I even. Cool. Page order, automatic, normal, reverse. You got to get the point. It depends on what you want to do. Okay. So here it also has scale to paper size. I mean, look, scale to fit paper size. So let's say if I say, I click here, destination paper size. And I click here. And again, you see, you just choose. And again, you just choose what paper type you're using. And you go from there. But for now, I'm going to uncheck this. And I'm going to go back up where it says paper handling. Click on it. 
cover page. Let's say someone have a cover page. Let's say you're doing a resume or a business document. You guys get the point. Uh, if you don't want to print any cover page, you just say none. But let's say you do have a a, print, a cover page you want to print. You just click on before document or after. Now that's that that is based on you. Okay, let's go back. We'll say cover page. Click on it. And here we go. We'll say print settings. This for the fun part. And it did, a lot of stuff gonna pop up, but don't be afraid. It's it's nothing. All right, here we go. Boom. All right. So under printed settings, you see what it say: basic, advanced color settings. Okay. Here it shows. These these are two different tabs. Your basic. If you click on your basics, you'll see all of this. You click on your advanced color settings. You'll see this. But for the sake of the tutorial, we are going to stay with basic. And we're going to get into the paper source. Okay. Your paper source is with your printer. You know a tray that you put your, that you loaded your paper into. But since I only load into one tray, I'm only going to just keep it on auto select. But let's say you load into cassette two. You click on that. Or if you did. Or if you have your paper in the rear, you know, use this rear paper feeder. Click that. But for me, I'm just going to click on auto select. Now, here we go. For sublimated printing, a lot of people say, well, it is, it is said to use presentation paper mats. Okay. But once you click on your media, media, media type tab here, you'll see a whole bunch of different presets, I want to say, I guess, uh, to choose from. So, what I can tell you, uh, one thing I can tell you too, is trial and error. Uh, let's, say you, let's say you want to test out plain paper. Hey, you can do that. It's just, hey, you just test it. You know, trial and error. Learn your printer. Learn your equipment. Uh, let's, you know, and uh, press it to see what it looks like. You never know. Um, some equipment does different things better than others. Some people do it. Some equipment does stuff different. You know, I wish we could say, hey, for every um, item or equipment out there, hey, use the same settings for everything, but it don't work like that. Uh, but for this print I have, it also gets tricky. Because it's a premier presentation paper mats. And it made me say, oh, I wonder which one I'm supposed to use. But again, like I'm telling you, on your spare time, you could test out each one of these if you if you feel like you want to. It's up to you. Me, I have already tested this here. I haven't tested this one here uh, for this printer. But for this video and for the time sake, I'm going to test. I'm going to click what is what is the standard one to choose, which is presentation paper mat. Boom. Color. You click the color. You have grayscale and color. You keep it on color. Color settings. You see here where it says it's been vivid. But when I click on it, and it has menu settings, and it has three different options to choose from. I had already tested each one. And the tricky thing is, a lot of people will say Adobe RGB. But for this printer here, my Espen ET8550 series, my Espen Vivid and the Adobe RGB doesn't look any different. It looked the same. And there I go back by saying, test your settings learn your equipment um don't be afraid to use any type of paper um to just test things out just see what they look like test 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 trial and error that's how you that's how you're able to learn your equipment guys don't be a robot use a human brain to test things you mess up you always can ball it up and throw it in the trash okay cool 
but for the sake of the, the for the sake of the, the uh, tutorial, I'm going to use Adobe RGB. But I want to keep it on extra vivid. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to print one item of Espen Vivid, then I'm going to come back again, and I'm doing one as Adobe RGB, and let you guys choose if you can tell any difference or which one may look better. So first, I'm going to choose Espen Vivid. Cool. Which is my printed color settings. Okay, here we go with the, the print quality. Now, whoo! The standard thing that everyone says to choose and pick quality. But I find through my years, years of um, trial and error, it depends on the thickness of your paper. Some paper is thin, some paper is thicker than the other. Um, I find if I use anything from 100 GSM that and down, I would just keep it on quality. But if I use anything above 100 G GSM, I would choose high quality because the thickness it absorbs more of the ink. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use quality. Then you guys always want to mirror your image if you're doing sublimation or any type of vinyl work. The only time you don't choose mirror image. Um, let's say, okay, what's that paper type? Um, wow, well, I don't have for the tutorial. You know what? I do no tutorial on that, um, soon. Um, let me look that up. You know what? Let me find that out. Um, I don't have the paper here. I get into that in another video, but for now, we're just going to stay with sublimating. And if you're sublimating, you always want to mirror your image. Um, so I would click on mirror image. And I will go up, double check my settings here to make sure that everything to my liking. Cool. But before we print, I want to go to print settings here. And I'm going to click on expansion just to show you guys everything what's going on. And you see here, blah, blah, two-sided printing for those that want to print two-sided. If your print, uh, if your print allows you to do that, as you can see here, if I click here, if I, you know, boom, boom, whatever. Um, and hey, supply levers, you guys get the point here. So we're going to go back up to preview and here I want to say it's it's already cho it's already uh I have already ch um chosen scale to fit but let's see what happens when I do it again okay so this pop up print entire image entire paper so let me just do that and see what happens boom you see what you see guys when I mean just experiment it's not like we print anything so how can you, we mess up you know cool and that's what I want I wanted to do this I wanted to cover the whole paper here okay so and that's when we went back to preview but if we click on here and go back to Print settings. What the print settings? No, it was uh um was it layout? Which one was it? Paper handling. Okay. You see here when it say it was on the paper handling. Okay. As we go back here, scale to fit paper size. Okay. Here we go with trial and error. I'm going to click here. And that didn't happen, as you can see. And click here, and I'm going down to my paper type, U.S. letter, border list. And let's say if I click here, I just want to see what happens if anything would change here, in which it didn't. Okay, so I go back, 
I'm gonna go back to the original board list. Say cool. Now I'm gonna go back to the print settings just to see if anything changes there. No, everything looks the same. Cool, cool, okay. So go back to preview. And let's see what happens when I click on scale. Let's see if the scale would change from my earlier layout. So when I click on scale, mm, it didn't change. Okay. So let's go back to my paper handling. And let's uncheck scale to fit paper size. And let's see what happens. And as we see, nothing happened. Okay, so as we go back from paper handling, we'll go into print settings. Let's see if there's anything there. No. So let me go back to my preview. And scale. Still, everything looks the same. But look, it still shows your board list. Okay, so let me change the paper type and see what happens. Boom. There we go. It did exactly what we wanted to do, guys. We want to print borderless, so once I changed that to US letters from borderless, we had got the right edges. So now let's go back and change it back to US letter borderless. Boom. Okay. And remember, I don't have anything scaled to fit. We're gonna go back and we just look at layout. You know, we could go color matching and we know that they don't have anything to do with this. I mean, to do with the borders. I'm just doing it just for the sake of the tutorial, going in depth, trial and error. Paper handling, pages to print, okay, automatic, scale, hey. But I wonder, um, when I click here, I wonder just because when I went down and changed the board list, what happens if I go US letter? Okay. Then let's say if I say uncheck that. Okay, nothing happened. It went back to original settings. So I'm going to uncheck this here. Go back to paper handling and go back to my print settings. And paper store, paper mat still the same, everything still the same. So remember guys, for this first print here, I printed in uh, extra and vivid. And make sure I write that down on the back of the paper once we print. Okay, cool. So um, you don't have to go back to preview, but I'm going to do it anyway. You can always just say, just say print. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to click here. I'm going to preview. I'm just doing it just because I want to. You don't have to do it. And I'm going to click print. So now we just wait on the printer to print. And let's see what happens from there. Okay. It says my printer is not connected. Boom. There it goes. Connected. It was sleep. <laughs> okay. Now we just wait on the printer to do its thing. And guys, um, for you guys that don't have the Espen's ET8550 series, the wonderful the wonderful thing that I found about this <laughs> this uh, printer here is that the tray comes out automatic for you, and that is so awesome. And it it adjusts it would adjust by your paper size. Crazy! I love this print. <laughs> I love this printer. Wow. Okay. So now we just wait on the printer to print. Okay. And doing parts like this here, I will fast forward so that we get it, so we can save time in the tutorial. And remember, guys, doing the printing part, I will be uh, fast forwarding. But for now, hey, we just wait again. We just wait on the uh, wait on the printer to get you printed each sheet. Okay, cool. 
as you guys see here, my printer is finished. And guys, remember, when it comes to sublimation paper, uh, and your paper look faded, <laughs> do not panic. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's sublimation. Once you put heat to it, the heat will activate the gases and all the ink will absorb into your substrate. So again, do not panic if it looks faded. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, for the back here, I'm going to put s Vivid. But we're doing a test, right? Okay, as you guys see here, I wrote down the name, and I'm going to just set it down here. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going back to the computer. So what that meant said, now I want to print this again. So I'm going to File, Print. Okay. Cool. But this time here, I want to do something different. I want to, we want to use the, the, um, the Adobe RGB settings this time. So I will click on peer view. I'm going to go down to print settings. And here, Color settings, I'm going to change from Espens to Adobe RGB. And I'm going to change the print quality again from high quality to quality. And remember, choose your media type. I click here, but I'm going to leave it on presentation paper mat. Boom. You always want to mirror your image because the paper. When you print, it comes out like this, but let's say you didn't mirror your, mirror your image. You know, you had to set it face down. So think about that. If you didn't remember, it, it wouldn't look right. It'll look opposite. So I'm going to check here. Okay. Now, here we go here. We see that it's not full like we want it to be. So I'm just going to go to here, print setting, and I'm going to say, uh, let's go to preview. And let me just say, scale to fit and see what happens. Okay. You know, you could do preview, scale to fit, and I'm going to say, fill the entire paper. Boom. It didn't fill the entire paper like I wanted to do. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to click back here, check this back, preview, paper handling. And I want to click here and see what it is. And we see that didn't do anything right, which is crazy. But let's choose here and go here. And it still really didn't do anything at that point. That's why I tell you guys, trial and error. Learn your printer, learn your settings. Don't be afraid because you're not messing up anything. Use some regular paper, typing paper. But you don't have to do it because it shows you here what is what. You know, that's one thing about the Mac. It could be tricky, but it's not tricky. It's, it's nothing because it, it gives you options that you can choose from. So go back down to, uh, let's say, expansion, which is nothing. Print settings. Okay. Go back up to print setting. From print setting, you want to paper handling again. And I see the page order automatic. Let's go back to color matching. Cool. Layout. Okay. Okay. Now, here go to preview. Now, here we go here. Now, I see. We have to click here and boom.
like we learn from them earlier and now, there's different ways to get it to scale. But under preview, we see that if we want to fill the entire paper, even after we choose chosen water list. Okay. And with that being said, I want to check my settings again, print settings, and make sure I have chosen Adobe RGB. Cool. Color, color, presentation, cool. Quality, okay. Print quality, cool. And earlier I went back to print from preview, but now I'm going to print from here. All right. And remember, guys, when I'm printing, I'm going to fast forward the video for time's sake. And now I'm about to print. Okay, guys, we are back. As you guys can see, the printer has finished printing our paper. And this is this is what this looks like for the Adobe RGB. And again, remember, I'm going to write it on the back. Okay, like so. And I'm just gonna set it here. Okay, since we have that color palette palette out the way, I'm going to close preview, and I'm going to um, quit preview. Okay, but now I want to do something beside the color palette because we have already two color palettes. Now I want to um, do the image, and what I'm going to do, um, I also want to test my black. Um, I want to see how vivid or deep my blacks are with two different settings to see if I notice any difference. Okay, so we're doing this here inside. We're going to do this preview. Okay, so I'm going to. Click this file, this image, and wait for it to pop up. And boom. And as you guys can see, this is something that um, I made up for Kobe um, during the time um, after his death. Um, yes, I also <laughs> design, um, you know, I do graphic designing, I do websites, but, um, I have found another passion and um, I decided to follow that passion. And the guys, one thing I'll make real quick too, is um, if you have a passion, um, if it's something that you want to do, please do it. Please do it. Don't doubt yourself. Don't be scared. Go for it. So I wanted to get into a self-formation ink business for a long time, um, be a supplier, but I, I always looked at the other competition and everything like that, and I didn't do it. But I'm going to tell you guys, it's never too late. But if you feel like you want to do something, go for it. Go for it. Because the next man, the next woman is not waiting on you. Go for it. Do what you have to do. Start your business. Today, tomorrow, start it. Don't be afraid of anything. You will not know what will happen until you do it. But with that being said, let me get back into the story. Okay. So here, I'm back into the computer again. Here, we're going to print Kobe Bryant. So, I'm going to go to File, Print. And remember, we're going to print with two different uh, color settings. And you guys uh, know what I mean. The one from um, the Espens. Vivid, or we're going to use the Adobe RGB. Okay, cool. Now, if you ever get a file that look like this, I'm back on the computer. If you ever get a file that look like this, and you're like, whoa, what happened? Don't panic. Go here to your orientation. And you see, you just click. And wait a little bit and see what happens. Boom. There you go. There was no need to panic, as you guys see. Okay. So now, 
I want this full scale. So I want to scale to fit. So but I want it to fill entire paper. So I'm going to click here. But in my paper choice, I want to make sure I also chosen US letter border list. And boom, as you see. So, as you guys can tell, you can pretty much do some of the simple things already here when it comes to scaling, you know, field entire paper, copies per page, you know. Let's say if I wanted 10 of these here, I would just click here and choose what I want. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. No. This meaning like uh for let's say if I have multiple pages but copy per page, let's say if I want two of these, then let's say it was different and I want two of the next page, two of the next page, so on, so on, so on. You guys get a hope. Okay. So I'm gonna click on preview and Let's go to layout. I just want to take it through it again. As you guys can tell, it's matching here. Color matching. You know, you want to choose Espen color control or whatever your printer say here. Paper handling. You know, pages to print. Page order, so on and so on. Cover page. Um, you guys click on the print settings. And um and you know it will pop up. Okay. So here we go now. Go down, have your basic show, you know, clicked on, which it will be already clicked on for you. But let's say you um was curious about what this does, you just click here. And this here is something totally different. I want to mess with unless you um, do some on uh, YouTube tutorials uh, so you can understand the adjustment of the colors. You know, some people play with this here and they get their image the way, you know, to get to get their image the way of their liking. You know, you would, let's say you mess with brightness, as you see here, it, uh, you know, you know, here, let's say you mess with contrast. You got to get the point, right? It's just something you can play with to understand your print. But in that, other than that, we're going to go back to basic. And um, paper source, remember I say auto, or you just choose whatever tray you want to choose from. Because sometimes you could have paper in different trays, so sometimes you will have to choose which tray you put into. Which cassette tray, whatever. Cassette. Okay, so I don't have any paper in cassette one, so... It only showing here where the paper I have set in, but I don't have a paper in in rear feeder, uh, feeder also. But hey, I get it something that they do. Okay, but remember for your media type, you want to choose presentation paper mat, but also test on your guy test on your own time on different settings. If you settings have what my settings is showing here or preset. Okay, so the color, keep it color. Okay, so now you remember here when we say color setting, we um uh, we're gonna start out with Espen's Vivid. Then we come back, we're gonna do Adobe RGB. So for now, I'm gonna go to Espen Vivid, and you want to change your print qualities. And also remember what I said earlier about testing your paper. To see what your paper do, do or don't do. Uh, some paper uh, may not absorb the same. Some paper may be too thin. Some paper may be too thick for a certain setting. You, you know, uh, maybe if you have some thicker paper, you try high quality and maybe get a better um, press, a better print on your substrate. So for the sake of the, tut the tutorial, we're going to go with quality. And remember, 
When it comes to sublimation, mirror image. Click. Okay. So as I see, I have everything the way I, I like it. Borderless. With that being said, I remember I did an Edgeman's Vivid because we're going to print it two times, twice, uh, so I can see if there's any difference. And so you guys can see if there's any difference with the different settings. And now, with that being said, I'm going to print. Okay, it's preparing to print. All right, remember guys, uh, during the print process, I will be fast forwarding the video. So bear with me. Okay guys, we are back. And again, remember, I will fast forward during the print setting. Uh-oh. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you something that happened. It printed, it printed this way, which is fine because I'm only doing a test uh, for the sake, uh, sake of the uh, video. So I guess in the orientation, I guess I was wrong, um, but that's fine because I wanted to look like this anyway. You know, I didn't want it to be this way. Okay. so. On the back of I'm going to write Espen Vivid. And remember guys, you see how things like this happen? This is trial and error. It's not like it's an error. Hey, because if we were to print it this way here, I probably wouldn't like it too much. But hey, I like it this way here. So when I take my substrate, what I want to use uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to press it and I want to get that look. So this is Kobe Bryant. Ain't going to look faded. It's going to look faded. It's supposed to look like this. Sublimation paper look like this. It, once the heat hit the paper, the gas will release the ink onto your substrate. Remember that, guys. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going back to the computer. I want to go to File, Print, wait for it to pop up, wait for it to pop up, boom, okay. So this time, I'm going to leave the orientation as is, because I see now I do want it to, it to print that way, okay. So with that said, let's jump into it. Um, for the paper, I'm going to go ahead and choose borderless. Um, cool. And I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, go for it. Let's say, you, let's say it was here, you know, let's say, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Let's say it was here. And I'm going to do click here. I'm going to say scale to fit. Then I want to change it from print entire image to Fill entire paper. Click there. Because that's what I wanted to do. I don't want to waste no paper. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now I'm going to go to preview. I'm going to go down to print settings. And here we go. Okay. Remember earlier, I had printed at Espen Vivid, but this time here, I want to print as Adobe RGB. And I've got to make sure I have the print quality from high quality to quality. And also remember, we have to mirror our image. Boom. Okay. And if you guys are confused by anything else, you can always go back into the video and see what each setting does what. And also learn on your own. Play with your own equipment. I mean, go into it, test things out. Hey, you can learn something on, on the way, okay? 
So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and print. And remember guys, during the printing process, I will fast forward the video for the tutorial time. And about to print, boom. Now just waiting for it to do its thing. Okay guys, we are back. As you guys can see, it has finished printing. Okay. So this one here would be our Adobe RGB print Adobe RGB. Okay. Now Okay, cool. Okay, so I was thinking I'm going to exit out of um, the snake Kobe. <laughs> I said Kobe. I'm going to exit. I go ahead and exit out of the snake Kobe. And um, I was thinking, hmm, I want to test out the colors even further. So, but let me see what I want to use here. You know what? Let me try a human. Uh, well, not just a human. Let me try my image here. Yeah, it's cool. It gave me op it gave me options where I could test out the ink also because I don't want to sell you guys anything. I don't want to be trying to sell anyone, nobody, some crap. Okay, everyone say, hey, my ink the best, my ink this, 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 that. Hey, I'm going to show it. I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to show it. So with that being said, we're going to print this image here. And, and since I say that ink popping, let's see if I get that image to pop. Okay. So we're going to go to file. We're going to click on print. U.S. borderless, scale to fit, scroll over, fill, entire paper, click on preview, we're going to go to print settings, okay, paper source, you know what to do, media type, you know what to do, color, you guys know what to do, color settings, I'm going to Start with this one first. Then I'm gonna come back. I mean, oh, I said come back. Then I'm gonna come back, and we're gonna choose, uh, change it from Espens to Adobe RGB. But for now, we're gonna leave it as Espens Vivid. Okay. Print quality. Remember, I told you depends on your paper. Trial and error. Learn your printer. Okay. So, and also your paper. I mean, learn anything that you do, okay? Just learn it. Just see what could do what, okay? Learn your heat press. Learn the temperature. How to how to act at the temperature five up or five. Um, let's say you let's say you put, supposed to set at sixty seconds. What to do for six five seconds, okay? Let's, try, let's test it out for fifty five seconds. You get you get the point. So we're gonna do quality. We want to mirror our image. And from there, I'm double checking to make sure that everything is the way I want it to be here. And I'm going to print. And remember, guys, for the sake of the tutorial, I will be fast forward forwarding it during the printing process, okay? So bear with me. Okay, guys, we are back. And as you can tell, we are finished printing. Okay, on the back of it, I have to write down Espen's Vivid, okay? So I can remember what is what. Epson's Vivid. Okay. As you guys can see, Espen's Vivid. Put that down. 
going to go back up. We're back to the computer again, okay? We're going to go back up to file, print. Okay, here we go. All right. So if it, if it's on scale, we're just going to click here. We're going to click on scale to fit. We want to say print. We want to change it from print. Oh, never mind. First of all, we want to do borderless, okay? So we want to go here for the paper size, depending on your paper, okay? My paper, I'm using U.S. letter. So I want to click here, go over, and I want to say borderless, okay? Then I want to go down. If it say, hey, if it's on here, I'm going to change from here to scale to fit, okay? Then once that, once you do that, this, this diagram pop up. As you guys already know that. I want to say print image. I want to say, I want to change from print entire image into fill entire paper. And boom. Okay. Then I want to go from preview to print settings. And boom. And all we're going to do here is we're going to change a couple of things. Okay. We're going to go to color settings. This time, we're going to change it from Express Vivid to Adobe RGB. Then we'll change the print quality from high quality to quality. And we want to mirror our image. Okay? You always go up and you can always double check. Anything if you need, you know, need be, you can always go back, you know, Look at anything that you want to look at, okay? It doesn't make any difference. If I was if I was to go here or if I would go here, it don't make any difference. Because when I go back, it's still gonna be the settings I chose earlier are gonna be the same, okay? So I click on print settings and like I told you guys, it's color settings still showing what? Adobe or JB. The print quality still showing what? Quality. Boom. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and go with print. And remember, for the sake of the video, you already know. I'm going to fast forward the video. Okay, doing the printing process. Okay, guys, we are back. And as you guys can see, we are done. So, like I said earlier, this here would be Adobe. Let me turn it around. Like I said earlier, this here would be Adobe RGB, okay? And you write this on the back. Okay, guys, I'm back to the computer now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close out my preview, okay? And one thing I want to say, um, I'm about to end this tutorial. Well, not tutorial. I'm about to end this tutorial take, um, and we're going to go to the heat press. So in the next take of the video, I will come back, and we will be doing live pressing with my heat press, okay? And you guys will get to see what type of heat press that I use. And you guys will get to see what size it is, okay? Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. And stay tuned for the next, for the next take. I'm not going to say video, for the next take, okay? Thank you guys so much, okay? Hello, everyone. We are back. And as promised, in this video, we'll be doing live press, okay? And remember, guys, uh, we will be pressing what we had printed earlier from the earlier video, okay? Uh, you guys remember Kobe? Um, remember some of the color palettes that we had printed, okay? So, let me move that to the side. And this is some of the materials that I'm going to use today. I'm going to use a circuit 100% uh, polyester women t-shirt uh, to do a press on. If you guys can see that. Also, I'm going 
going to use some different types of material. All-purpose microfiber cloths. Some of you guys are familiar with that too, maybe. Well, a lot of you will be familiar with that. Uh, to see what it looks like on a different type of material also. And remember, you can uh, also supplement on microfiber cloth. So, and this is what the cloth looks like here. 12 by 12 inches all around. Okay. All right, here, here's the press. This is my Star Hoptronic 16 by 24 press. This here is my baby. It has uh, automatic release and it has an um, automatic timer countdown. And again, this is my Star Hoptronic heat press. 16 by 24. And one thing I want to touch bases on too is um here's the time that we need our lint roller, okay? Now, for the sake of the, the uh, tutorial, I went ahead and did all of the other cloth, microfiber cloth that we're going to press on today, but I only left one that I ain't do because I just want to go over with you guys for just in case some of you guys need to be shown this. Okay, all I would do, you know, all you have to do is just, you know, grab your material, take your lint roller, and just, and just roll it across your, your substrate. Just like that. You can do it, you can do it as many times you want. It just depends on you. Okay, cool. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, get ready to press. But when it comes to sublimation, I always love to put down a bush of paper on my heat pattern first. Okay. Then I would take the material that I would be pressing and I would lay on top of my butcher paper. Okay? Now, I'm going to um, turn on the heat, um, I'm going to turn on the heat press and I'm going to let it get the temperature that I uh, choose. So with that being said, I'm going to stop the video, let it, the heat press warm up, then from there I will continue on the next part of this live um, heat pressing video. Thank you guys. All right, hello everyone. We are back. Um, the heat press has reached its temperature and now we are ready to do our thing. Now we are ready to heat press. All right, here we go. Um, you gotta remember, whenever you put your material up here, you wanna take a lint roller and you want to go across of it but as you guys knew earlier i had i have already done it i'm just reminding you guys again okay so put my left roller down straight down the material whatever and make sure when you come to sublimation you always want to sublimate on top of a, a, a bush of paper okay and you always want to pre-fresh your material for at least about three to four seconds. When I when I prepress my material, I always put another bunch of paper on top of it. So with that being said, I'm going to put in my platter. I'm gonna show you guys how it does automatic. Voila. Okay, here we go. Let the fun begin, guys. So first, I'm going to do a color palette, and it would be this one here, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, it's the, I don't know if you can see that, but it's the Epson Vivid, excuse my handwriting. <laughs> All right. 
So normally, uh, you would take your um, you would take your tape, your temperature tape, your heat tape, and you would, you know, take it and press it, you know, on um, wherever you want to do it at, lay it down to keep it from ghosting. That means, really, ghosting means if your material was to move, it would. It would um show another faded area beside it on each on a certain corner or whatnot. Just look up the term ghosting, then you guys will understand what I mean by ghosting, okay? So if your sublimation paper require you to use bushel paper on top of it, put it on top of there. But if your uh, sublimation paper don't require that, then there's no need. Uh, my supplementation uh, requires that I put a bushel paper top of it, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So here we go, guys. About to um, press, and um, I have I have my temperature set for 385, and we were going for 60 seconds, and um, I may fast forward some of those times. Um, I'll get to looking at the video. When I look at the video, I determine if I'm going to fast forward or just let the minute go by. But I think I'm going to fast forward because I know everyone, um, we have better things to do. Just wait on something to get done within 60 seconds. 60 seconds, I mean. Okay, here we go. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a countdown. So it's here. And one thing about the automatic um, presses, um, when I'm doing sublimation, I never let it automatic open itself because they have a jerk. So when it gets to like 10 seconds, five seconds, I always put my hand here and I keep it from popping up hard by itself. And you guys will see what I mean in a minute. Twenty seconds to go. Okay, we're getting near. Okay, here we go. Um, so normally around about 10 seconds, I will, I will put my hand on it and I will keep it from jerking up. Because sometimes that can help with the ghosting too, uh, keep it from ghosting. And I will gently let it come open. And you do not want to breathe the gas. Turn your head or step away or put on a face mask or something. All right, here we go. I'm about to move the butcher paper. It's hot. You know, that's why you put the have on heat gloves. All right, here we go, guys. And again, it is hot. Ooh, ooh. Okay. And remember, guys, this one here is uh, the uh, Espen's Vivid for this one here. Remember, we were testing, right? So, this here is the Espen's Vivid. I'm going to break, bear with me. I'm going to let you guys see. We're using micro microfiber. Clock rags for this, and I have to say, uh, not too shabby at all. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> okay, so I'm set this to the side. Bear with me, I'm coming back. Okay, so now I'm bringing over my other clock clock rag, my microfiber clock rag. And be careful not to hit your hand here. That's why you put to have them gloves. Okay. And another thing too, guys, you also want to use, um, if you guys press a certain item, the bushel paper, that the one that was on top, a lot of times you may want to go ahead and use another sheet, okay? Because a lot of times some of that gas, some of that, uh, that ink has gotten into the paper. You may not see it, but once you press, once you press sometimes on top, it'll seep through too. 
So that's why you always want to, when you use something on the top one, when you use it, just throw it down to the side and get you another sheet, uh, sheet of paper, butcher paper. And that's what I'm reaching for now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the second version. This one I did. This one I did right here. Oh, my friend didn't play here. Get that on. I'll get straight off. So you see that. I threw down the wrong one, man. <laughs> okay, let me make sure I get the right one here. Okay, this one I need to be drawing down, right? Here. Oh, this one. Sorry, guys, I'm talking to my assistant and make sure I do everything right. Um, set that on. Just set that on the floor for me. Okay. All right, here we go. Now we're going to use this color palette. You guys see that? And we're going to, and remember, it's the uh, Adobe RGB. Let's set it on top of it. On that rag here. Put on a butcher paper. And we'll be doing a pre press for three seconds. Another thing, too. You said you, you guys see what I mean when you let it go up, uh, the automatic um, heat presses, they have a jerk to them, and you see what happened, my paper moved and shift. That's how a ghost stick uh, occur too, if you don't tape down your material. Or if you don't hold down your press and gently let it out by yourself. So I'm glad that, I'm glad that that happened. But I made a boo-boo. I, um, pre-pressed with the with our color palette on top of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my butcher paper back on there. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I did that. And I'm going to see this part of trial and error. Sometimes you mess up. You're going too fast. I'm going to go ahead and let it go for 60 seconds. And remember guys, check your pressure too. Um, the pressure rate from 1 to 10 um one is the lightest, 10 is the heavy pressure. Uh, I always keep it between six, seven, and eight, depends on what I'm doing. Um, you wanna to try to get at least mid, mid pressure to um, light heavy pressure, depends on what you're doing. Okay, here we go again. You get to the countdown. And with this automatic machine, I don't let it Pop up by itself because suffocation ghosting. There we go. And I gently let it let it come up itself. I step away from the gas. All right. I'll remove my remove my butcher paper. Set it to the ground. I'm going to remove my color palette paper. Wow, look good. Wow, okay. You guys remember this here. And Adobe. Hope you can see that. RGB. Hey, look at this. This looks good too. Wow. Uh, no, I'm not wasting on this. So what I'm going to do here. Set this over here. Over there. I'm trying to keep it separated. Wow, this looks good too. Okay. Look at this. Now those colors popping. That's on that's on a micro micro fabric cloth. Okay, cool. Set that over here. Keep it separate, okay? You hear me? Okay. All right. Let me get another, get another rag. Cloth. And remember. I had already lit roll each one of the individual. So you guys make sure to lit roll it if you you know if you haven't. But I have, so that's why I'm not doing it now. 
I'm going to do it for the sake of Tori for the timing, okay? So this time, I'm not going to make a mistake of uh, pressing with my color pa uh, palette on top of there, pre-pressing to get the moisture out of it. That's why you pre-press. Pre-pressing is for get the moisture out of your out of your, uh, your substrate. So here we go. Okay. Boom. Okay. This one here. It's been vivid. Here you go the color palette. Let's give it a rock and roll. And remember, during the uh, 60 second, I'm going to fast forward, okay? All right, guys. Okay, this is finished. I'm removing the bushel paper. I'm about to remove the palette paper. Ha. Okay, remember, palette paper, remember, it's, uh, it's been vivid. Keep this aside, keep up with it. Wow, okay, okay then. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> nice. Set that over there for me. Okay. Now I'm about to put on another microfabric cloth. I'm going to do a pre-press to get the moisture out the out the clock. It's gonna last for three seconds. Voila. Okay. Remove my butcher paper and the palette we're gonna use this time is the Adobe RGB. Here go the colors. All right, let's get to it. Boom. All right, here we go, guys. Here goes another 60 seconds. All right, guys, we back. Step away from the gas a little bit. Removing the butcher paper. Set it to the side. About to remove the, the color palette paper. Mm -hmm. so remember, Adobe RGB. Here you go, the color palette. Colors. Okay. Look at that. Just look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that gray. Look at that light gray. Look at them blues. Wow. Nice. Okay. Make sure to keep up with each one of them, okay? Let me get into it. Alright, here's our next. As we can see, guys, that um as you guys come along, as you guys are going along with me, like I was telling you guys, it seems like the it's been vivid and the uh Adobe RGB seems to be exactly alike. <laughs> Maybe I need to get um, 
magnifying glass or something to tell the difference, but it's hard to tell the difference. So I'm going to press the other ones short, but I may speed through it. You know what? No, I'm not going to speed through it. I'm going to take my time and just keep doing this here. Some of you guys will love, uh, love for me to do that. So here we go. Okay, remember, I put down my uh, substrate, my material. Do you lint roll it? I do lint roll it. I'm going to put the bush paper on there so you can pre press it. Remember, pre pressing anywhere from three to four seconds. That's what I do. It's not written in stone. You can do what you want to do, but that's what I do. Three to four, three to four seconds. Okay. I remove my butcher paper. Set it to the side. So I can grab the next cup. Um, there's any more color pattern over there with all of them. Oh, you just said you said that. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Okay, cool. Uh-huh. Oh, let me, uh, I don't do that. You know. Let's do. Okay, let's do one of these. Cause I'm gonna do one of these on the shirt, and one of these here on the shirt too, right? So I'm gonna do Adobe, and I'm gonna do that. This is it. Is it? Okay, cool. So let me see. Let me see this. All right, everybody, I'm back. We're doing Adobe RGB. And it's Kobe Bryant. Make sure it's a piece. And this one here, I'm testing out my black. So. Set it on top. We're gonna go for 60 seconds. Here we go, guys. Okay, everybody, we're back. Step away from the gas. I don't want to breathe that stuff. Let it. I don't have a. I don't have a gas mask on. So, hey. Right. All right. I'm about to remove butcher paper. Set the butcher paper to the side. Now, here we go. About to remove color pa palette paper. Kobe Bryant. Adobe RGB. Okay, here we go. Here we go with COVID. Here we go. All right. Wrapping my neck, micro fiber. My microfiber clock rag. We're going to do a pre press. Okay. 
So here we go. 60 seconds. Okay, guys, we're back. I'm stepping back from the gas, banning away from me. I don't have a gas mask on. You don't want to breathe that stuff. You never know what it could do to you in the long run. Okay, remove the, removing the butcher paper. Set it to the side. Removing sublimation paper with the color. Whoa. Okay. Remember this is extra vivid. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now, now that ink is popping. <laughs> That's all I can say. That ink is popping. <laughs> like I told you guys, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to do more and more videos. I had to earn you guys trust. Wow, that look nice. All right. Now, we have two more items that we need to press, but I'm going to do my last two items on this shirt here. Hope you guys can see this on this shirt, on the t-shirt. I'm going to press one in the back, one in the front. So let's get it. Okay. And with that being said, I have to talk about what, I, what I'm going to, what, what's necessary for me, uh, in order for me to achieve that. Um, let me cut a piece of uh, butcher paper. I have anything that I have to use. It won't have me have to be used. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Since I'm going to press a shirt, the front and the back, right, guys? I'm going to take a butcher paper. And I'm going to put it in the inside of the t-shirt. And the reason being is I don't want any, I don't want no gas absorbing through one side to the other of the shirt. While I'm pressing, and let me and let me be honest, okay. Normally I don't do it because a lot of times I don't have that problem. But I'm going to tell you guys, it's a, it's from trial and error. Some shirts I have to do it with, some shirts I don't have to do it with. With this shirt here, I don't know. But normally when I use jerseys shirts, I don't have to do that with it. So I'm going to. Line it up right, correctly. Oh, this one. Okay. Want to line this right, correctly, so I can see what I'm. I want to get a good. And that's why I'm telling you guys about the T-square. If you don't know, your machine. So, I'm going to pull this up. And the rule. Well, let me keep pressing. Where am I? Uh, let, me, let me make it look fresh. I got to do something like this. Okay, guys, I'm cutting another sheet of, of butcher paper. I know you guys can hear that. All right. I'm going to pre-press this shirt first. For three seconds. Cool. Okay.
So we're using Kobe. God rest his soul. And it is the extra vivid. Hold it for me, because I need to talk about something here. Okay, let me put this shirt down so I can so I'm gonna burn myself. So I can tell you guys about something. Okay. You wanna get your lint roller? Remember, I have already done it, but I'm doing it again for the sake of for the tutorial. Okay, you guys see the collar here? Uh, I don't know if you guys see it. Now. Let me just make it, bring it close. Okay, if you guys, I hope you can see that. Let me see. Okay, from the collar here. Um, let's say I have my design. Some people will take their fingers. And it depends on the shape of the collar. Since this is the V-shaped collar, you may go down two fingers, depends, three fingers, some people more fingers. It depends on you and your preference, okay? So with me, I will go down. Sorry for that. About that bump. Let's see how far I'm gonna go down. Let's see. We'll go down two fingers. I thought I get the line and back how I want it. Oh my God. All right, here we go. You know, I want to put this right here. Alright, this one I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one first. Adobe RGB. It's not gonna be perfect, guys. I'm just doing it for the sake of the uh, tutorial. Okay. So let me get my bushel paper. Normally you would tape it down with your heat resistant tape. All right, everyone, we're back. Step away from the gas. Removing my butcher paper. I'm going to remove my sublimation paper. <laughs> and whoa. And <laughs> hey, remember, guys. And this is Adobe RGB. Set this to the side so make sure. And wow, that looks so good. Wow. Okay. Hope you guys can see that. My goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's on the t shirt. Wow. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> Wow, like I said, that ink's is popping. Mm, mm, mm. And sure enough, we have this t-shirt rocking. <laughs> so now I'm going to flip it. Okay, now since I'm going to flip, okay, as you guys see here, I'm going to flip the shirt, right? But I want to put down butcher paper first. Like I've told you guys before. Okay. 
right, everybody. Let's slide this up some more. Gotta be careful too, because it's hot and it hurts when it burns. It hurts. Okay. And when you guys be doing it for so long, you will get the feel of it. How to press everything, how to line everything up for your liking. All right. So now, um, I really don't need I really don't need to do a pre press, but I'm going. To, well, you know what? I really don't need to do a pre press because hey, I've been pressed for so long. So with that being said, I'm going to take my Kobe Bryant here. It's been vivid, and we're going to use this. Okay. You know what? Oh, I'm glad I caught this here because I've been saying, yeah, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to do a quick one, two, three. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, guys, here we go. 60 seconds. All right, guys, we're back. <clears throat> Let's see what's up. Step away from the machine for the game. Bend it that way. All right, we want to slide up. I'm going to take off my sublimation paper. There you go. And I have to show you guys Kobe Bryant. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. Let's get close of Kobe. Let's check him out. Nice. Okay, guys. Move the camera back a little bit. All right, everyone. I'm gonna step up. Uh, I'm gonna step in front of the camera. I just want to say this here. Thank you guys for at least watching <laughs> to the very end of this, of this tutorial, if you have. Okay. And I want to say um, thank you for your patience and. Um, I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me. If you guys could, I was um, wondering if you guys could leave a like and subscribe to my channel if I deserve it. Uh, if not, then I will do better next time. With that being said, I am Sir Smith with That Ain't Poppin'. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.